Hi there, my name is Nicole Hebert with the Musha Journey to Hope team, and this is Voices of Recovery. Um, and then that kind of being said, the previous series that I did, um, I always asked people to leave a message of hope, but in this series, I really want to focus on the resiliency of people. So I would like, if you could, if you could think of maybe a moment that was a pillar in your recovery that kind of just changed the game for you, what would that be? The pillar of my recovery was when I lost my grandma. Um, so my grandma was basically my mom. My grandparents looked after me since I was five years old. And my grandma was the one who poured love into me, poured everything that is good in me. She was the one that poured it in. And so the beautiful thing was is that I was in recovery for two years. She got to see me clean. She got to see me turn, turn the other way, which, I mean, obviously I lost my mom 10, uh, 11 years ago, and that means they lost their, their child. And so they got to see what addiction at the end of the road of addiction is. And so she seen me after a few years of really going through uh, what I call hell, she got to see me turn around and start walking on the right path. And that is when, you know, she all of a sudden she just passed away. And it was a really random event that happened. But at that very moment, I got that understanding that life is too short, right? Um, and I don't know why, like, it's not like my, my grandma was super young. She was young, but, uh, I mean, in her, in her mid-60s. Um, but just realizing that life can get at you any type of way. Like, death, death can happen in any sort of way that, you know, we can be taken away at any time. Mm -hmm. And it was at that very moment is when I decided to go through with my music. That's where I decided, you know, uh, I made the final decision that I wanted to be with my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't want to, cause I was sitting there in early recovery only a couple of years in. And I was like, I, I was rediscovering myself. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know who I wanted to be with whether I wanted to pursue and all these things. And, and I guess more or less when you lose a pillar like that in your life, um, you really learn, learn to lean on loving yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing is, is now I didn't, I don't have that woman who loved me unconditionally all the time and poured that love into me. So it's up to me to love myself. And by doing so, everything else has been coming into play and my relationships are starting to recuperate and, and regenerate and stronger than ever before. And that's because of, again, you know, the main, I guess, just talking it out and through with you, I guess the main thing would be is, is learning to love yourself, mm -hmm. right? And, and the funny thing is I've heard that and, and I'm, I'm sure everyone in recovery has heard that a million times and it kind of gets annoying after a while. Cause you're like, I'm loving myself. I'm loving myself. <laughs> like, and, and they say that, like, you know, I remember in being in treatment centers, they're like, go into the mirror in the bathroom and tell yourself that you love yourself. And that. Like, that doesn't work. I'm doing that. I've been doing that. It doesn't work like that for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And maybe it works for other people, but it took losing that one person who was my rock my my everything uh to really learn that I had to love myself and by doing so my recovery and my life in general has escalated immensely since then yeah. like I all, all of a sudden like you talk about uh, accomplishing and, and achieving things that uh you never really thought that you would do I'm like uh, just share some ach achievements I remember being in recovery or sorry, in the treatment center at Pine Lodge. And I told, they have you write down goals and achievements. 